passionate about women supporting other women. So today we're going to be talking about what is beauty. Today's episode has been sponsored by Sylvia Rios Coaching. Uh, She's offering you, you know, transformational life coaching. And she also has a program that is all about beauty as a state of being. So go and check that out. Her link is in the description. If you want to connect with either myself or Sylvia, you can do so. Again, links are in the description. Feel free to reach out at any point in time. Join, engage, comment. We're here, we're live, and we're ready to talk to you. So let's get started. Sylvia, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, my name is Sylvia, as Melissa said, and I am um, a life strategist and coach. And I am passionate about helping women uh, love who they see in the mirror because we have so we are so full of judgment and we have so many concepts in our heads that sometimes we stop enjoying life because we are just bombarded with ideas of what um, we should be, how we should be, where we should be. So that's uh, what I do for a living. Absolutely. We need more of that. There are so many people right now who don't understand that, you know, sometimes maybe their comments are hurtful, right? Um, I grew up, and and I'm going to get right into my own experiences with beauty. I grew up in a very um, interesting household. My my grandmother would constantly comment on my weight. Um, My family would comment on my weight that I needed to lose weight. I needed to watch what I was eating. And um, it just became this entire thing. And it wasn't until my teens, and I and I got very vocal in my teens. <laughs> I, was, I was confident in who I was, and my grandma made a comment with about me one day, and she says, "Melissa, you know you're you're fat." And I said, "Have you looked in a mirror though? Like you're telling me that I'm overweight, but so are you, and that's not okay. That that that's hurtful, right?" but I was still confident in who I was. I still, you know, I went out and I had friends and I was social, but my definition of beauty is different. I'm beautiful inside. While I do like beautiful things on the outside, I'm beautiful on the inside. I'm a kind, caring person. I have a heart of gold. I'm fiercely passionate about the people that I love and that I care about. And for somebody to tell me that I'm not beautiful is not like that's their opinion. And you and I were talking about this right before the show is that's their opinion. So what do you think the biggest struggle actually quit that? What is your, what do you think beauty is? Well, beauty is a concept. So as a concept, it depends on who is looking at it, right? So they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So the question is, who is the beholder? You know, for somebody who is looking at um, shape, maybe an architect, maybe an artist, they were going to look at the symmetry, the shape, the proportions. So then for them, that is beauty. Then for the rest of the world, uh, it could be, well, for the spiritual people, beauty is in the soul. So, wow, so you have a beautiful soul. And for the rest of the people that just fall in between, and we want to also live in this society that is so judgmental, we need to know that we are the beholder of looking at our own beauty. So beauty is also a projection. So let's say you go on in nature and you go and look at a flower and the flower is so beautiful, but you know that flowers are beautiful and you like flowers. So what are you going to see? The beauty you probably are not going to examine if you know the, the petal is a little bit uh, falling off or that the flower is just totally dying. You probably don't look at that. You just have a concept and you do a projection. So society in different cultures look at beauty in women, especially differently. In some cultures, being overweight is beautiful. In other cultures, you need to be skinny. In other cultures, you have to have a big butt. In other cultures, you have to have big chest. And so what is beauty? Big lips, smaller lips. So who is to say what beauty is? So if we want to own the space of the beingness of who we are, we need to acknowledge who we are. So even though maybe the proportion might not be what society is looking at, because I myself have extra weight, 
So maybe for the culture is, oh, well, that person is overweight, so it's not beautiful. I'm like, really? So what are you looking at? So what is the essence of the person? If the person is not responding and reacting to that judgment, will maintain the beauty that is individual and unique in each person. But if that person gets contaminated with the thoughts and the projections of other people, that person will not shine anymore, will shrink and will just show in life totally uh, not radiant. And then this person will look in the mirror and not see herself as beautiful and project, I am not beautiful. So we need to be the beholders of our own beauty when we look in the mirror and when we look at who we are in every aspect, because sometimes the shape is not okay, but did you look at your eyes? Maybe you have beautiful eyes or your eyelashes are beautiful or maybe the nails. I remember that um, I, met a couple and they were so in love. And then after a while I met him and they were not together anymore. And the lady for this society or these standards, she was a little bit too short and maybe a little bit too big. But he said that he loved her, um, I, her nails and he loved that she would have a manicure and pedicure and he would be enamored with that part of her. So what was he looking at? And he was looking at how kind she was, um, how beautiful inside and how was the relationship? Because what you bring in the relationship is not something that will fade. And let me tell you, the physicality fades, but the essence doesn't. And if it does, it's because you are in charge of making it fade and you are allowing everything outside or the trauma that you endure and sometimes self-imposed to determine how much you can shine. So I'm all for being sovereign mm -hmm. <laughs> and sovereignty is about you call the shots, you make the choice, you decide. Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned flowers because I tend to look at some of the most beautiful things and for anybody watching or catching the replay, I want you to imagine the most beautiful thing you can think of, whether that be a flower, whether that be a cat or a dog or a tree or a sunset or the beach, whatever it is that you find beautiful, I want you to imagine that. Now, imagine that a flower, let's, let's talk about a rose bush because roses are universally beautiful. A rose bush doesn't care whether you think it's beautiful. It has no concept of beauty. It will grow its flowers and the roses will bloom so that it's propagated, so that it's pollinated, so that it's healthy and, and all of that. It doesn't care whether you find it beautiful or not. And I think that majority of us, now don't get me wrong, when my husband calls me beautiful, I love hearing it. I think we all do. We all love hearing it, that validation. But at the same time, we can feel beautiful internally without that validation, right? I, I get my nails done, not because I want my husband to like them, not because I want other people to like them, because I like them. Not because I need them to feel beautiful, but they make me feel better. I like them, right? But I don't wear makeup. Because I don't, I don't feel like I need to wear makeup. It's not something, it's, it's for me, it's a waste of time. For me, it's a waste of time. But then there are days where I think about it and I'm like, should I wear makeup? Should I, you know, I, no I notice so many other people wearing makeup and you see all these successful people on TV who are wearing makeup and I'm just like, oh, but I don't want to. And so I don't. And I show up authentically. And I think that's beautiful. Um, I think that for me, looking at a piece of art, and, and we mentioned this beforehand, looking at a piece of art, not everybody is going to find that same piece of art beautiful, right? It could be a completely abstract piece of art, and I might find it absolutely stunning, but you might not. And that's okay. We, we, we've gotten to a society where we all have to, society kind of makes us think that we all have to think alike. We all have to be alike. We all have to aspire to the same things. I had an issue, not an issue, but I had something come up for about the show today. 
sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. I had something come up for the show today and my show is unlike most, right? You think of podcasts these days, you think of shows these days and they're all interview style, right? They're all just 20 minutes of an interview where you're asked questions and you answer the questions and, and that's really it. Where I wanted to create something like Oprah. I wanted to create a talk show where we have meaningful discussions that are going to change the world. And somebody made a comment about it being um, a waste of time. And that really got me pausing. And I, and I got really just, I withdrawed um, right for the show and asked myself, well, why, why am I letting this bother me, right? Somebody else is thinking that, you know, my show's a waste of time where I think it's beautiful. I think the fact that we can have conversations, that we can help other people see different perspectives, different stories, different experiences, and not have the same type of interview every day is, is beautiful. And just because they don't, that's okay. And also uh, because it is a projection uh, for that person, you know, it's not valuable. But that doesn't mean it's not for you and it's not um, and it's for you to be in sovereignty and then you say this is what works for me and what timeline are you stepping into the timeline that you are a contribution or the timeline that maybe that is not very um, lucrative to do this kind of work and then you should be doing something else because you are in the give and take versus in the gifting and receiving. Because these conversations are a gifting and receiving more than a give and take. That's why the structure is different. That's why you feel so passionate about that. And maybe that's why it's structured so differently. So you're just comparing you know, pears to apples. I don't know if that's the word you say. But, uh, it's just comparing things that they not necessarily can compare. Yeah. And then can we value the uniqueness? Yeah. We be everything is a state of being. I mean, ugly is a state of being too. Cranky is a state of being. <laughs> so everything is a state of being. So what are we choosing? The problem that we have is that people feel that they are not in choice. Oh, I wasn't like for me, I have a story behind why I'm working in this. Uh, my mom was a very beautiful woman. She was blonde, so I always strive to do something similar to look like her, right? Uh, she had green eyes. And um, I was born with dark uh, skin, dark hair, and a big nose. And it was a big problem for her. So she never made me feel beautiful and made me compensate being uh, smart. So I appreciate that. So I, I, I got smart, I learned, I took classes, I speak several languages, I did everything to compensate. But one of the things that we need to look at when we are improving and evolving and trying to be better people, are we doing it because it's a, um, a sensation or a feeling or uh, something that wants to be born from the inside out or is it compensation? Same thing with plastic surgery because I did have to go and get plastic surgery in my 20s. I needed to fix that big nose. And well, but did I do it because I really desired to change my nose? No, I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be accepted. But God, you know, has a way of laughing at what we desire and what God wants us to experience. I got an infection. The, the nose was a disaster. The, the technique was horrible. My nose fell. I got deformed. I needed to get a reconstruction to recover the same nose I was born with. So after all the trauma of the surgeries, I ended up with the same nose. Now, I'm not saying people should not choose plastic surgery or, you know, getting the nails done or doing their hair or the makeup. But the point is, are we choosing it because we want the validation from the outside or because we feel that we're playing and we feel much more who we are having those things? I don't do my nails but you do your nails, I do makeup, I play with that. So what, is, what do we play with? And yep. why are we sometimes so serious judging other people? Because at the end, beauty is a judgment. Yep, and it's, I, I love that you said that, the, the internal, right? The, the internalization, am I doing it? I think asking yourself the why, right? 
is your mom. So we have a comment really quickly before I get into what your mom did. I had a similar experience growing up. My hair texture was more coarse than my grandmother, aunt, and cousins. I had to unlearn that I needed to aspire to have good hair. I think with, so there's two ways that we can go about this, right? And from a, from a child perspective and a parent perspective, I have four children. Now, out of my four children, one of them is, is taking after me in the weight department and, and is a little bit more heavier set. And, you know, I very rarely comment on her weight. And I don't because if she's comfortable and she's happy, then she's comfortable and she's happy. Now, she has made comments about, you know, I should eat healthier and I should do this. And so every so often, if she's about to make a choice, I ask her. Are you comfortable with that choice? You've mentioned your weight. Are you comfortable with that choice? And I leave it up to her. Now, your mom, and this is for any parent, you know, you don't want your children to experience what you, what you experienced. It is, we try to avoid our children experiencing what we've experienced. And sometimes we go a little bit overboard in that, right? So for your mom, she might have been trying to help you avoid the experiences, right? Um, But the question becomes is, are we allowing our children to create their own identity, create their own sense of beauty, their own self of sense, uh, self-expression, right? My daughter will go out and the stuff that I'll look at and I'll be like, well, you're not wearing that. And maybe it's just, she was wearing, I think a a tube top under another shirt. And I'm like, nope, you're, you're 13. You're not doing that. Not yet. Um, But at the same time, if she wants to wear mismatched clothing, go ahead. Who am I to tell you you can't wear that? If you think it looks good, then you think it looks good. And if we all had, going back to artwork, if we all looked the same, okay, let's say we all have a different house, right? Because we all live in different houses. Let's say we all decided to furnish our houses the exact same way because that's what society told us we have to have this artwork we have to have it in this color this scheme this layout it's all going to look the same you're not going to have that 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 uh awe-inspiring moment when people walk into my house um my mother-in-law has this, this painting and it's not actually a painting what happened was that the gentleman the artist that she went and saw, he had a roll of paper that he would clean his brushes off on. And when he was done, it was a man. And she said, I want that one. And he said, well, that's not, that's just me cleaning my brushes. Like I'm not even signing that. It's not art. And she's, but I love it. Everybody who walks in my house and sees that painting is so awe inspired by that painting because it is so unique. It is so different and nobody else has it. It is literally a one of a kind. And when you walk in and you see something, wherever you are, when you see something, when you see a butterfly that is not a monarch color, maybe you see a butterfly that has pinks or yellows and greens or whatever, or a flower. I saw a girlfriend of mine has flowers that change colors. So she bought roses They start off white, then I think they go yellow, and then they go pink, and then they go orange, and then they go white again. And they change color depending on what stage of growth they're at. And they're beautiful. But not everybody's going to find those things beautiful. And when you were saying, you know, everybody be the same, the uniformity Mm -hmm. kills creativity, and it kills the soul. So you can have, you know, robots, but then where is the soul and the spirit? And that's what we express, how we decorate our homes, you know, how we dress, how we eat. Everything is just individual and it's beautiful. And that's the beauty about acknowledging. And then the beauty is also when people leave you alone in the sense of stop the judgment. You know, that's how we grow. And going back to the person who said about the hair, when we are children, uh, we don't know why our parents want that. My mom was afraid of my future. Like, you know, if you're not pretty, you'll never get married. And so you need to be uh, smart. 
So in her world, that was the best she could wish for me. It was coming out of a reaction and a disappointment. And I could not see the possibility of being smart and speaking languages and doing so much. I could only see her disappointment because I was a kid. So the lady who talks about the hair, maybe um, just look, are you looking at the disappointment of the person who told you you should have a different hair? Or uh, maybe there's something underneath that that person meant as something good and we don't get to see it. So we always have to try to go into the other person's shoes to see where they're coming from. Some people, they are just outright mean. And it could be that parents are mean because you know they're human beings too. But sometimes they have a desire and they can only wish for you as much as they were able to achieve because they don't know more than that. Yes. So that's why we evolve. So we go a little better and then the kids, our kids go a little better and they go up higher. It's like a tree. So the tree and the roots are the ancestors. And so every time that there are some, you know, leaves and branches, those are your grandparents. And then those leaves are, you know, their children. And then when those just fall off, then there are more branches because they are, we are all looking for the light the same way the leaves of the tree are going up looking for the light. So let's just think about that. We have the foundation, but they couldn't see the light the same way we are seeing it. And our children will see even more light than we do. Yep. And some of the most beautiful people that I've met, externally beautiful people that I've met, are some of the most damaged, not damaged, some of the most hurt internally. Um, I have a couple people that are, I'm very close to who are absolutely stunning externally, that they're beautiful people. But on the inside, they don't like themselves. They don't like their lives. They don't like where they're at. They don't like any of that. And some of the time, like maybe for your mom's experience, you said your mom was absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe her experience growing up was she was praised for her beauty. She was praised for the way that she looked, right? And it wasn't, hey, you're smart. It was, no, you're beautiful. And we need to start making sure that as a society, we're talking about beauty and everything. If somebody, if you have a child or a friend that is smart, that's beauty in their, in their intellect. Correct. Their, their knowledge is beautiful, right? I think that we also need to experience. So encouraging people outwardly that they're beautiful, right? In any way, shape or form, because you're right. Different cultures have different classifications of what beautiful and attractive are, right? And I think that there is a huge difference between beautiful and attractive, attractive and this is this is one of those key phrases and where words have power beauty is not something that you need to acknowledge by anybody else you you're right it is a state of being right mm -hmm. when you want other people's when other people find you attractive that's not your internalized excuse me internalization that's their thought process, right? I don't have to find myself attractive. If I, if I feel beautiful, being attractive, the word attract, right? Attract, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a singular. You're, that's what you're putting out there, right? So if somebody finds your intellect attractive, your personality, your ability to make them laugh, Right. I think that our outward appearance doesn't always isn't always the attraction. Right. I don't know how many times and my husband's gorgeous and, you know, he might not think so, but I think he's absolutely gorgeous. And but what attracted me to him more than anything was his love for his mom, his down to earth nature, the fact that he could make me laugh. I don't get embarrassed at all anymore because he's embarrassed. He's, he's so out there and, and fun loving 
that it's just, he's, it's, it's, I don't care anymore because he's already, he's embarrassed me more than I've ever been embarrassed in my entire life. So he got me used to being embarrassed. Um, so I don't feel embarrassed anymore. And I think when it comes to other people and interactions, it's, are you, what are you attracted to about that person, about their personality, about, you know, and remember that that comes from you, not from their knowledge. Yes. And um, when you were saying he embarrassed you because he's funny or what oh, is the yes. embarrassment? Yeah. So yeah, he, um, he'll, we'll go shopping and he'll start skipping down the aisle. And like, he's just, he's so fun and like, he's fun loving. He's very spontaneous and um, uh, biggest. Okay. I'll give you the biggest story. So I'm going to share a story that I, I don't think I've shared online. Um, I was pregnant with our oldest daughter and I, I'm not, I farted in the store. Um, I couldn't hold it. And I farted in the store and we were out shopping with our family and he yelled in the middle of the store to my brother and he yelled, he goes, Hey, if you smell shit, it was my wife. And he yells this in the middle of the, of the department store and everybody is around. Like everybody in the store starts laughing. There is not a single person from the front of the store to the back of the store that did not start laughing at my husband's comment. And I'm just like, oh my God, I have never been more embarrassed than I have in that moment. And he just, it's, I don't get embarrassed anymore because if that's the worst that I've ever been embarrassed, that wasn't actually that bad. Right. So, uh, joy is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so many things are like, they said also that uh, beauty is uh, love. Yeah. So can we reach that state where we are just enjoying every moment mm -hmm. and we just let go of all the judgments or what happened? Because sometimes we have so much trauma and the trauma can be stored in our bodies. We think, you know, it's just a memory. No, it's a memory that's a cellular level. But we, if we start uh, looking at uh, doing things that are joyful, then we will feel more beautiful. It almost feels like um, it's, a, a, it's a healer, that, um, that energy, joy, can heal us and make us beautiful. Yeah. So I do uh, believe that humor, joy, childlike um, spirit, they are all beautiful. So that's how you experience life with him. Yep. And even relaxation, you know, when, when you can relax in your body and in your mind, it's, it's, it's life-changing, right? Because you don't focus on, oh, what are they thinking? What are they doing? What, are, what are, what are they saying? And you just relax into the moment, right? And you be, and I think you can experience joy and beauty and relaxation if you're not in the moment, so I would take it further and say that the more you put yourself in the moment, the more your life starts to change. I'm so I'm overweight. Um, I, like I'm not actively doing anything to change it, but I do notice that when I am more active, when I'm living in the moment, when I'm having fun and I'm getting out there and doing things with my family, that it, it starts to fall off me. And so it fluctuates, Right. But the last few months, my husband, you know, broke his ankle. So we've been kind of stuck at home. Um, so we haven't really been able to enjoy our summer and then COVID for the last two years. So I've kind of been stuck at home and, and not doing anything. And that's, I'm not living in the moment. I'm, I'm doing the motions. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm relaxing, but I'm not living in the moment. And I think that the beauty in that is being able to, you know, put yourself out there, do things that you enjoy, do things that make you happy. That's beautiful in itself. And just like Sylvia teaches, it is a state of being it, that, that is what it is. When you can find beauty in your every day, it's a state of being. And also I would like to add the following. Um, we choose our bodies. We think we don't. 
but we did. Because with the body that we have, we have a certain set of experiences that we are going to go through. I mean, I live in Chicago. If I am skinny, the wind is gonna throw me over and break my bones. So that's the experience that I might have if I get really, really skinny, right? Well, it's just a joke, but in general, that's what it is. With different bodies, we experience something different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, we can keep our space better and we can get focused and more on the things that we want to do without other distractions. So we never know exactly why we chose this body, but if it's not changing, it's not just coming from the outside. It has to be something deeper inside that says this set of experiences is that what my soul, my spirit are enjoying. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. And when I'm done with this experience, maybe my body will change and adjust to whatever I'm choosing next. Yep, exactly. I, I think... I feel like the world just needs to understand what beauty truly is. And it's not what everybody else thinks of you. It's not what everybody, it's not even worrying at all about what anybody else thinks, feels, or believes. It's, it is a state of being. It's what do I find beautiful? What do I like? What do I dislike? You know, and finding beauty in, I have, there's so many animals, dogs, Okay, so one of my favorite dogs is so ugly, it's cute. And it's, I love uh, French bulldogs. They are adorable. Um, pugs are adorable. They're so cute because they're so ugly. Like they're just, I look at them and I'm like, you're so ugly, you're cute. Like I just want to squeeze you, right? And it's finding cuteness in or beauty in things that, you know, maybe other people don't. Or, yeah, you well, can I tell people, you know what I tell people when they say, oh, you should be doing this diet, you should be doing this, you should be changing the color of your hair, you should be doing like cosmetic surgery, you should, you know, be taller, whatever. I always say, are you going to ask a chihuahua to become a French bulldog or a Great Dane? No, they were born with that set of experiences. So you might have like a chihuahua that is a little skinny or a little, you know, chubby, but in general, they are dogs, we're human beings. And if we are born, we have the genetics too. And so we, yet everybody says, oh, genetics is not important. Well, it has uh, some importance because, you know, why didn't we choose the color of our eyes, the color of our hair, the texture of the hair? We have it in the genes. So we come here as we come, and then we do the best to enjoy with this body everything that we can. And that's beautiful, being able to be in joy. That's for me. I don't know. I, I tell the my clients to do that because, yeah. it's like, okay, look at the projections. How many projections are we doing with this beauty thing? What if you believe so much that you are beautiful that you don't care what other things. So people think, okay, they let the law of attraction. I'm gonna repeat 20 times. I am beautiful, I am beautiful, I am beautiful. But at the end, we are do, saying that because we don't want to be not beautiful. But if we say, oh, I'm really beautiful, but I don't care if I am and I don't need to repeat it because I am and I like myself. So then that's it. So we, that's coming from the inside out, not repeating, you know, like, I, because we all used to do when the secret came out, we we're all repeating, I was doing it at least, <laughs> repeating, you know, law of attraction. I'm going to attract by repeating that phrase. And then, well, eventually we noticed that no matter how much we tried, some things do not change because we have our codes for what we want to experience. We have them inside of ourselves. Yep. Already. We are, you know, whether we, how do I word this properly? Whether we're beautiful internally, externally, whether we're smart or whether we're, you know, a genius or just on the cusp of being a genius, maybe we're, you know, smart about some things and not smart about other things. I think that people forget what the purpose of life is. 
and and the purpose of life is what's truly beautiful is we're here to experience we're here to experience all of the good all of the bad all of the ugly everything that comes in between and still enjoy life right now i'm not saying i want anybody to experience negativity but it's a guarantee We are guaranteed to experience difficult times, difficult experiences, um, negative thoughts, limiting beliefs, all of these things that we experience on the day-to-day, stress, overwhelm. But it's finding the beauty in, hey, you know, maybe I didn't like that, but I can change it, right? Maybe I didn't like going to work there. Well, I can find another job right? Something that brings me joy, something that makes me feel good. Again, with the show, right? Not everybody's going to enjoy my show because so many shows right now are interview style. So it's, hey, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. That's going to be the end of the show. And we're going to go where I want the interaction. I want to have that conversation. I want the interruptions of our viewers. I want, you know, to answer questions and to feel like we're creating conversations instead of just listening to other people talk about maybe something that we don't want to hear about or the same thing over and over and over again. If you go and search Facebook, uh, Spotify, any podcasting sites, YouTube, and you look for people having genuine conversations about topics that matter, you're going to find business. You're going to find spirituality. You're going to find all of those things, but all of them are going to be similar. I have um, like um, a weekly get together in Facebook with a friend and it's um, a creation conversation, exactly what you're doing. So what we do is expand because when we go in the back and forth of the interview, there is a cutoff where there is no growth in the topic because there's only one person supposedly answering questions. But when we have uh, this kind of conversation, uh, the conversation transforms, it goes into bigger. It's like a snowball, it gets bigger and bigger. And so we are talking about things that we never anticipated. Uh, we were going to be talking. I wanted to go back to something you were saying about uh, negativity and positivity. And having contrast in life is what helps discernment. So then we can choose and we say, okay, this, I have a taste for this, or I would like to experience more of this and not so much of that. So the contrast is beautiful. Every time that we have a problem, just welcome it. I, first of all, I do check boxes. I said, okay, being silly, checked. Uh, having an accident, checked. Breaking a bone, checked. Getting sick, checked. I don't have to do it again. So life, I've done it. So now give me more of the things that make me expand instead of contract. So we should be, not we should be, but we could choose to be in gratitude and just in amazement that we made it, even though something really, really bad happened, we're still here. So that's my way of looking at things. Yeah. And that's how we learn and grow, right? We don't learn what we don't like if we don't experience the things we don't like. Correct. Right. We don't know how to find beauty when we don't know what beauty really means. Yes. So yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Is there anything else you'd like to add about beauty or touch on or? Well, um, when we, like what you were saying right now, you know, when we allow other people to determine our beauty, we stop being in choice and we stop being in our power because we don't have power. It depends on them. So when that person withdraws the approval or withdraws the liking us, so then what are we left with? So we need to be able to ground our energy in who we are. And then no matter what happens, always be in the eye of the hurricane. And our um, word is sovereign to anything. So let's ask ourselves this question. Uh, Are we sovereign and sovereign to what? Are we sovereign to saying, 
I'm not beautiful or I'm ugly or I am short or I am tall or I am dark or I'm light or whatever? Or are we sovereign in saying, I call the shots and whatever I say today I like is what I like and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> and that can change. Correct. Right? Because we can choose, we are always in choice. Mm -hmm. You know, when we uh, allow somebody else to make a choice for us, then we're not in choice. And that is a choice too, but the choice of not choosing is painful. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm all go? good. And I so appreciate this time with you. And absolutely. it was fun and it was expensive. And then we got to make the conversation bigger than if I was doing a monologue <laughs> or if you were just not having anybody. So that's how we contribute to each other. We contribute to the audience too. I, that's what I love about this. That's why I created the show. I could sit there and I could do Facebook lives on random topics all the time, but it's one-sided. And I like having the diverse, I like having the inqu inquisition, I love having the ability to frame it in a different way and see all different perspectives. That's, that's the beauty of this show. And also that you are supporting women because uh, many times women were taught to compete and not to like each other. And so being in a space where we can all shine without competition because we're all different and we're all beautiful, then that's amazing. So I like that about your show. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. All right, so you have a program on beauty as a state of being. Do you wanna tell us quickly about that? Yes, I have a six week uh, program that is one-on-one -on -one, and then we start unveiling what are the beliefs that uh, people have and what's stopping them from embodying their own beauty. Sometimes we're just too programmed. And so there are a set of beliefs that makes us think that you know, we're not acknowledged, we're not received, et cetera, et cetera. So there are like six principles that I use. And uh, also to see if we are in alignment or not with who we are, because that also doesn't allow us to see our own beauty. And that's my program on beauty. I also work with people with stress because uh, even not feeling beautiful can cause the stress. But because I, I used to work as a physical therapist for many years, um, I know what it is to be working uh, caregiving. You know, it could be in healthcare or you can have like a family member that is sick and then you are under stress. So then I also do the six weeks program for those people too. But mostly uh, I'm working with women, also women who are uh, trying to decide if they want to undergo uh, cosmetic surgery because I guide them into them discovering the, the whys and getting ready. Because after uh, cosmetic surgery, it could be difficult also. And if people did not change what they were feeling before they will get addicted and or maybe they will they will not get a good result or they will not be happy so then beauty as a state of being also helps women who are considering cosmetic surgery do that and for the ones that still choose it and uh, want to do it i uh, walk with them during and after because with my background in healthcare. I just help them to, you know, go through the swelling and all the emotions that happen after surgery. That's amazing. I love that. All right. Well, if anybody watching or catching the replay is thinking of any of this, thinking about beauty, thinking of, you know, changing those limiting beliefs or even considering plastic surgery, definitely check out Sylvia. I highly recommend it because even for my own self, um, I work with clients as well on, on their limiting beliefs. If you don't change the way you think before you make a big change, you're not going to be happy with that big change. Yes. And you're just going to find something else to pick on. So that's where the, the addiction to cosmetic surgery comes from. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Sylvia. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciated it. Thank you so much. All right. All right, Distant Family, this has been your episode today. Again, today's episode has been sponsored by none other than our guest speaker, Sylvia Rios. Go and check her out. Link in the description. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, again, my link is in the description. I'm Melissa Kretschler. I am your host. 
And I will see all of you wonderful people on the next episode. So have a great morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you are watching and or listening. Join our newsletter, sign up, get involved, share, and like us on all of our platforms. And I will see all of you on the next episode.